Morning folks, welcome to our service here on the 26th of July in Strain Presbyterian. Um, great that you can come along and join us. Uh, we'll be starting in about four or five minutes time um, and Eileen's going to play some music for us as we gather. <laughs> Thank you, Eileen. I'm just going to reposition this camera one more second. Good morning, folks, and welcome as we come together and as we worship this morning. It's lovely to have you all joining in with us this morning from various different places uh, and all our different congregations as well. So I'm just flicking through the messages here just in case there was anything about birthdays. No, nope, nothing so far. So good morning and welcome. 
We're back again in strain this morning um, because of what we're doing with the live stream currently, but we know that we're more than just strain as we gather here. Um, we have Bally Black, we have Cardo and Bally Freenas, and we have other folks um, from different parts of the world joining with us. We are one family, so welcome as we come this morning to worship God. I have a couple of announcements just before we come to any birthday blessings, um, so please bear with me just for a couple of moments. The first one is a, a huge thank you. Thank you to everyone who came along on Thursday and brought food for Storehouse, for Food Bank. Uh, it was a great response and very much welcomed by the Food Bank uh, here in Newton Arts. It makes a huge difference and this is a very practical way which, in which we can help those of us around us who, who don't have what we have. So thank you for donating and remember there's another one again at the end of August. Um, and you can, if you want to give anything in, in between time, just get in touch with myself um, or Fiona. I'll explain that in a second. Um, and we can arrange to make sure we get the food for you. So thank you. We have something else which is new this morning. We have a new website. So if you know our website, which is strain.org, um, it's had a major revamp and it has now gone live, just gone live. So thank you to Rosemary and to Matthew for all their hard work on that. We really appreciate it. So please check in on our new website, have a look at it. Um, it's a lot more user friendly when it comes to things like tablets and mobile phones, as well as uh, laptops, desktops. So please check out the, the new website. And again, announcements and PowerPoints will continue to go up on the website, as well as on Facebook. Um, as more information about church becomes available again, we'll, we'll place it there as well. So uh, thank you for all that work. Um, one other thing just to, to say is that I'd be here next Sunday. I'm here all this week and next Sunday will finish me for four weeks. I'm taking a little break for four weeks. So um, while I am off, which is from the 3rd to the 30th of August, if there are any pastoral issues which require a minister, please get in touch with your relevant clerk of session. So for here in Strain, it's Fiona. Um, for Bally Black, get in touch with Alec. And for Cardo and Bally Freenis, um, get in touch with Herbie. Um, there is pastoral cover in place for the congregations, uh, so you'll not be left high and dry. So please, if there is anything that arises, just contact your clerk of session uh, and they will pass that on to the relevant minister. That is all the announcements that I have this morning. Just again to say thank you to folks who are here to give me a hand this morning. I really appreciate all their help. Uh, we've already heard Eileen playing. We're going to hear Eileen again a wee bit later on. Morris is going to read for us this morning and Alan is going to be praying. So thank you folks for, for agreeing so willingly to be here this morning just as we worship God in a different way. Um, what two birthdays I have, just to mention, um, from this week and the previous week, um, two of our older members here in Strain, uh, Bertie and Susan Russell, have both celebrated birthdays. Uh, if I got this right, it was Bertie's this past week and it was Susan's the week before that. Um, so happy birthday to Bertie and Susan, uh, both in their 90s. I'll not give away too many secrets by telling you whereabouts. Um, but happy birthday to Bertie and Susan. And we trust that you have enjoyed your birthday. Um, and I know you've had family rounds. So let's pause and let's pray for Bertie and Susan. Lord, it's lovely at every stage in life to be able to celebrate birthdays, to give thanks to you, um, and to just to, to recognise your blessing upon us. For Bertie and Susan, Father, thank you again for another year, for their birthdays, um, for the time they've had with family who've been there with them, and, and for the, the celebrations that they've had. We ask that you would continue to look after them and bless them in this year that lies ahead. Father, we thank you. In Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, folks. Um, if there are any other birthdays which pop up which I haven't seen, uh, don't worry, they'll get a mention again next week, so please feel free to, to put anything up that, that, that there is. Just as we come to worship this morning, as we come to, to, to think about God's word, let me share a verse with you. This verse is from Isaiah chapter 40 and verse nine. Um, Isaiah 40 is a chapter with lots and lots in it. Um, but this one verse, as the people were, as, the, as, as Isaiah was encouraging the people about what they were doing, he said, O Zion, messenger of good news, shout from the mountain tops. Shout it louder, O Jerusalem. Shout and do not be afraid. Tell the towns of Judah, your God is coming. 
you know, that, that verse is still relevant to us today. We as the church, right way around the world, have, the, have the, the calling upon us to tell people about God and to tell them that he loves them, that he cares for them, that he is coming again. That's what we do this morning as we worship together. That's what we do each and every day as we live our lives for God. So as we come this morning to worship God, we come to, to consider his word. Let's pause. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for, again, the opportunity to meet in this way, to worship you, to think about your words, to take time out with you, to make this your day, a day which is different, a day whenever we come close to you. Father, may that closest last all week, all, all month, all year. May we continue each day to live for you. And help us, Father, as we shout out and declare that you are God. So we ask you to be with us here in church. We ask you to be with us in each home where this is being watched, either now live or at some stage during this week. That your presence would be known, would be felt, that your arm to be around us. Father, thank you, now and always. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now, boys and girls, here's the question for you. I wonder if anyone can guess what fruit we're going to talk about today. I'll give you a clue. We've had small fruits. We've had cherries. We've had, sorry, cranberries. We've had things which are a wee bit larger. Uh, last week was a kiwi. So I wonder what we're going to have this week. Well, it's not the size of a kiwi. It's not the size of a cranberry. It's an awful lot bigger. Now, you might think it's the same colour as a kiwi because part of the colour of it is green. There's a clue for you. Let's see if anyone can be quick on the typing this morning with any guesses. This is a fruit that you might tend to see more while you're on holiday in a warm country. It's quite a refreshing fruit. Um, it's something maybe that you would use to cool yourself down or if you're thirsty. I wonder if anyone can guess what it is. Any guesses here? Melon. A coconut. Not a coconut. We've had a coconut before. What type of melon? Coconut. A watermelon. Ah, <laughs> prizes the Alan. Boys and girls, it is one of these. Now, I haven't got one with me, but I've got a picture. There you are. It's a watermelon. There you can see it as it's cut open. Kirsty, yes, well done. I wonder who guessed that. Um, a watermelon, it's so refreshing. It just helps you to cool down, doesn't it? Um, to all those poor people who are in Spain at the minute, uh, who are going to have to quarantine whenever they come back from holidays, boys and girls, maybe they're sitting at the minute having a, a slice of watermelon because it's so refreshing. You know, whenever you're on holiday, you get really warm if you're in a nice warm country, don't you? And you try all these different things to cool down. So boys and girls, I wonder who likes to jump in a pool to cool down, do you? Or maybe you've got a fan, one of those battery fans, and you can hold it up and it whizzes round and, and pushes a bit of cold air around you. Maybe you get a spray and spray it in your face. But we do all these sorts of things to try and cool down. Maybe parents, grandparents and teachers ask us to cool down sometimes in a different way. Maybe we get a little bit cross with others at times. Uh, maybe we're told to take a time out, or maybe we're told to cool down. Or maybe somebody's done something to us that makes us mad. You know, if you've got a brother or a sister, they're very good at winding you up. Um, friends can do the same. Maybe mum and dad wind you up at times, asking you to do all the homework, especially when you've been homeschooling, and it's, and it's hard and it's difficult, and you just want to be outside playing. You know, we, we sometimes we get really head up, uh, and, and we need to cool down. Maybe whenever it's the other way around, maybe whenever we've done something to somebody and we've wound them up, we have to say, sorry. And we're asked to, make, to mean it as we say sorry. But whenever we say sorry to somebody, we want them to accept it, don't we? We don't want them to be cross with us or angry with us. We want them to cool down. You know, there's a story in the Bible, in the Old Testament, in Genesis 33, and it talks about two brothers. Now, these two brothers, they've had a bit of hassle in the past before they, with each other. One of them has not been very nice to the other. He's, he's stolen something from him, something called his birthright. 
uh, and they, they get very cross with one another. And then years later, whenever they go to meet up, the brother who's done the wrong, he thinks, oh dear, my brother's not going to like me. My brother's going to be really mad with me. Um, how, how can I help him to cool down? How can I help him to, 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 to not be cross with me? And he sends all these gifts to him, hoping that that will do the trick. But the brother doesn't want the gifts. But when the brother sees him, he runs to him and he throws his arms around him because he's forgiven him. The story of Jacob and Esau and, 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 and how their relationship, it, it, it's, it, what happens with them. And boys and girls, get, get somebody to read it to you in Genesis 33. J Jacob is so... Um, He's so anxious about meeting his brother. But yet when he meets his brother, his brother has forgiven him. And his brother puts his arms around him and hugs him. He's really cooled off. You know, at times we need to cool off. At times we need to take a step back. When somebody says sorry to us, we need to accept that. Because somebody has done exactly that for us. And that's God. Whenever we come to God and we say sorry for our sins, sorry for what we've done wrong, and whenever we ask God to come into our lives, be our saviour, God forgives us our sins and he forgets about them. He doesn't hold them against us. He forgives them and wipes them away. He has the ultimate example of killing off. And God wants us to show that same love to others. So maybe when you're in a supermarket, you might see a watermelon. Maybe if you're on holiday, you might see a watermelon. You think how, how cool and how refreshing it is. And as you think about that, and think about cooling down. Think about how God holds nothing against you, but forgives you. You know, think about those people who maybe you need to forgive. And you need to put your arms around them. I can't do it at the minute, so just remember that. And just to say that I love you and I care for you. Thank you, boys and girls, for listening so well. Uh, and next week, we'll have the last in the series of different pieces of fruit. I wonder what it'll be next week. Have a think about that uh, and see if you can guess. But thank you for listening so well. Let's pray together, boys and girls. Father, thank us. Thank you that you forgive us. Thank you that whenever we ask for forgiveness, you don't hold it against us. Father, help us to forgive those who do wrong things against us. Help us not to hold it against them, but help us to show your love in forgiving them and for killing off. Lord, we thank you now and always. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks, boys and girls. Uh, we're going to hear from the Bible now. We're going to hear from God's Word. Morris is going to come and read to us from that. So, Morris, I'm going to bring the camera over. Good morning, everyone. Lovely to be here this morning, back in the, the sanctuary again after what seems a very long time. Our reading this morning is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 11, beginning at verses, verse 17 and finishing at verse 27. Jesus is on his way down to Bethany to be with Martha and Mary, who just lost their brother, Lazarus. And Jesus is there to comfort them. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him. But Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know even now, God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. 
Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she told him. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the world. May God add his blessing to this reading from his word. Thank you, Morris. Um, Eileen's going to come and play for us now, Come People of the Rhythm King. Eileen, that was lovely. Alan's going to come and lead us now in prayer together. Good morning, everyone. Let's join together in our prayers of intercession. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come to you through the sacrifice of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you that you showed your great love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We thank you that your mercies toward us are new every morning, and we thank you that you care so much for us and are interested in every aspect of our lives. As we come before you this morning, we ask that you hear our prayers for all those who need to know your loving kindness today. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are ill, and for those who are anxious or who face difficult times. Loving God, be near all who are lonely today, be near all who are in hospital, and for all who are fearful, give them peace. For those struggling to come to terms with bereavement, we ask that they would know the assurance of your love and care for them. For those whose treatment has been delayed, or those who are unable to get about as they used to, for all who depend on others, whether family or friends or social services, we ask for your blessing on them and on all who care for them, that they may draw strength from your love. 
Lord, as we gradually come out of lockdown, we ask that you will keep safe those who work in public facing roles such as retail, hospitality or education. We thank you for all who have worked in essential services throughout the pandemic and especially those who have worked in the health and care sectors and ask for your blessing and protection on them. Lord, we continue to pray for our government at this time and we ask that you would give them wisdom as they make decisions which affect our lives, communities and futures. Grant them grace to work together for the common good. We pray also for our church leaders and ask for your guidance as they think about and plan for the resumption of services and church organisations. Father, we thank you for the technology that allows your gospel to be proclaimed, even when it's not possible to meet together physically. We pray for the many children's holiday clubs which are running online over the summer. And we think especially of the Strain Holiday Bible Club running from Monday the 3rd to Friday the 7th of August. We ask for your blessing on the leaders as they prepare the material and on the children as they take part. God of compassion, as we look further afield, we pray for those in countries which are struggling to cope with COVID-19. We pray that they would receive the necessary aid and equipment. We also bring before you those in refugee camps around the world, living in cramped conditions with little food and medication. We ask that you would aid them in their plight and protect them from the pandemic. Finally, Lord, we pray for each other. Help us to care for each other, to love each other, and to pray for each other in these strange days. And we ask that in times of trial, you would strengthen our faith and keep our eyes fixed on you. Help us to know the height and depth and width and breadth of your love for us in Christ Jesus. We pray all these things in the name of your dear Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Alan, for doing that. Just let me move this camera again. Morris read for us this morning a story which I'm sure we know very well indeed. So thanks, Morris, for reading that. Um, the story of Lazarus and his two sisters um, as Jesus goes after Lazarus has passed away. It's a story which, like I said, we know it very well. We know that Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead again. Uh, we also know that Jesus comes in for maybe a bit of criticism at times because of the fact that he's so close to them at the time. And whenever they say he's unwell, he doesn't go straight away. So that whenever he does arrive, Lazarus has been dead for four days. And there's a conversation which goes on about, between Martha and Jesus uh, about resurrection. Uh, and, and when you think about that at times, maybe you think oh, Lazarus has been resurrected, look, look what's happened. But the conversation which goes on is not the same as what happened to Lazarus. Lazarus, yes, Jesus brings Lazarus back to life again. But Lazarus will die again. We don't, it's not recorded for us such, but Lazarus will die again. Because it is not the ultimate resurrection which Jesus talks about with Martha. Martha is an Israelite, or a Jew as we would say these days. Her whole family are, but they're also Christians. But they have an understanding of resurrection. Look at what her, she says to Jesus in verse 21. She says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask for. And Jesus replies by saying, your brother will rise again. And Martha says, I know he'll rise again in the resurrection at the last day. What's going on there? What is this last day? What, what is the, the, the belief which is there? Well, if you go all the way back into Daniel... And whenever Daniel, at the end of his book, records the visions and the dreams that he has as God speaks to him, in Daniel 12, verse 2, you have the, these words, Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. And then Jesus himself, at other times, even in John's Gospel, says, The time is coming when the dead will all rise from their graves, when they hear the voice of God's Son. They will rise again. Those who have done good will rise to experience eternal life, and those who continue in evil will rise to experience judgment. Martha is talking about 
the resurrection which comes at the end of time, whenever Jesus speaks, whenever Jesus returns. And Jesus uses that opportunity to say something to Martha and to declare something to all of us. He uses this, the opportunity to use these words. I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Jesus says to Martha at the very end. I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus starts to reveal to Martha a glimpse of what is going to happen to him. That he will indeed die sooner than what they think, but that will he will return in the resurrection. But it's the resurrection which is the ultimate resurrection. It's not like what's going to happen to Lazarus. It's not what has happened to other people uh, and does continue to happen as, as disciples perform miracles and people come back to life again. It's not that type of resurrection. This is the ultimate resurrection at the end of times. Whenever Jesus returns, we are raised from the dead and then there is judgment. But Jesus says not only that he is the resurrection, but also that he is the life. He's also starting to declare that he is the way by which there is no judgment upon you because you have been forgiven. Those two passages we read from Daniel and from Jesus speaking in John talks about some rising to everlasting life, others to shame and contempt of judgment. Jesus talks about um, the good will rise to experience eternal life and those who have continued in evil will rise to experience judgment. Jesus is declaring I am the resurrection and the life. He's declaring that I'm, I'm going to die for you. And whenever I do so, that is your means of forgiveness. I will rise again and eventually you will as well. And you can have eternal life through me and through what I have done. You know, we, we get a glimpse of that in the Garden of Gethsemane afterward, or at the tomb whenever Jesus rises again. Whenever he's not recognized at first by Mary, and everybody has to say to her, Mary. And then she realizes and she says, Master, he's been raised to new life. He's been raised to a new body. He's been raised to something completely different. Something that we have to look forward to. Lazarus was raised again, only to die. Other people were raised again, only to die again. But the resurrection at the end of time is our eternal body. It's, our, it's, it's, it's what will happen. It's what we read about in Revelation uh, as we read about the return of Christ. And Jesus, in this saying of I am, declares exactly who he is and what he is going to do. He goes on a little bit further um, when he comes to John 14 to say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And we're going to look at that next week to understand what that means. But we need to start to recognize all the promises from God's word. You know, Jesus says time and time again, uh, right the way through the Old Testament and New Testament, what the journey is going to be. You know, Isaiah is your perfect example. talks about a lamb being led for a slaughter. talks about how one is going to die in our place. talks about Jesus. And then Jesus here says, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, even though they die... And who they will live. Jesus declares, it doesn't matter if your earthly body dies. If you've trusted in me and what I am about to do for you, you will live forever because I will raise you again because you are my child. You know, the Israelites had this understanding of resurrection. They, they, they debated over it. In fact, they, they disagreed about it as well. The, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the, t the two different sorts of leaders within their community, religious leaders, argued about it. Pharisees believed in resurrection. Sadducees didn't. But Jesus declared very clearly that we will rise again to either eternal life with him or to judgment because of what he has done. It's hard for us to get our heads around that. It's hard for us to try and understand that. Our, our brains are not built in a way, really, that we can understand what eternity means, even what heaven means. 
it, it's, it's so far beyond our reach that we have to trust, that we have to have faith and just trust God. He knows what's going on. He knows what will happen. We have to trust him. But we also have to trust that he wants us with him. It's maybe not politically correct in these days to talk about heaven and hell and to talk about judgment and eternal damnation. But that's what the Bible talks about. The Bible talks about the fact that we either will go to heaven or go to hell. We will be judged. We will either dwell with God or we won't dwell with God. We will either have eternity with him or we will be condemned to death. God doesn't want us to be separated from him. Our driving force should not be that we want to avoid hell, but what we should want is a relationship with God. We should want a relationship with the one who loves us with unlimited love, a relationship with the one who sends his son to die on the cross, to be raised to new life so that we could have our sins forgiven. We have the ultimate example of forgiveness of sins we talked about it with the boys and girls about forgiving one another. God is the ultimate example of that. He wants to forgive us. He holds the door open. We just need to walk through. And he wants us to trust that. So if you've already done it, great. If you've trusted in God, brilliant to hear. If you haven't, what's stopping you? What's holding you back? God wants you to experience a life filled with him. And it's a great life. Yep, things don't always go your way. Things don't go the way you want them to. Um, things happen and you scratch your head at times and you say, why, Lord? But still, you're not on your own. Still, God is with you. And still, there is a plan in place. We just need to trust it. These people didn't realize at this stage that Jesus was the one who would give them that resurrection, who would give them that forgiveness. And he declares here, I am the resurrection and the life, eternal life. The question is, do we believe Jesus? Do we trust Jesus? And if so, how does that change how we live day by day? You know, for those of us who have already trusted Christ, we have trusted God and all of his promises and his word, that should change how we live each day. It should put a different emphasis upon our lives. Yes, our relationships here on earth are important and we love one another. I'm not taking away from that. But it should help us to realize as well that this is temporary. This is just the start. And what is eternal is our relationship with God and dwelling in heaven. And when we start to see that, then what this life throws at us does not give us fear. Death does not give us fear, but rather helps us to realize that that is our time whenever we are united with God in the place where he has created for us in an everlasting relationship with him. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Are you going to trust that life? Are you going to live that life for him? What are you going to face this week whenever you can declare, Jesus is my saviour. I love him and he loves me. Let's pray. Father, thank you for everything that your word teaches us. We thank you for all these I am sayings. And this morning, Lord, for realizing that Jesus is the one who died, who laid down his life, but then who took it up again as the first to be raised to new life for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord, help us really to stop and to think about that, to pray about it, and, and then to, just to let it change how we live each day. Lord, that we really would live each day for you in the realization of what you have done for us 
in the realization of what you want to do for all of this world if each and every person would only trust you. And then, Lord, help us to show the examples of how we can show that, to live that out each day so that others will see your love. Father, challenge us today in this incoming week to live our lives for you. And Lord, for those who haven't already trusted you, challenge them, please, today, Lord, with your Holy Spirit as to where they are with you, that they would put their faith and trust in you. Lord, thank you. And continue with us, we pray, in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks, folks, for joining with me this morning. It's been lovely to have um, you all online. Uh, I trust that the rest of the day is a good day for you. And as we go about this week, I trust that you would know God's peace and God's blessing. So thank you. Take care. God bless. See you again tomorrow morning, nine o'clock for Bible reading. Bye.